I built this tower back in 1996, while in secondary school. It was one of my very first builds, and I was bumped after getting some of my first minis to use in an AD&D table I was trying to DM. I made the main structure with hard chipboard and tried to add some bricks details with balsa grid. Used some regular foam and a used CD for the base, and I was exploring a personal grass technique as did not have much help or hobby references back then. I basically mixed sawdust with PVA and green paint and then applied directly over the surface. The grass hardened very well and it had a cool look. Also added some rocks and vegetation, but as you see, I dropped on the project and never finished the base. The door is also made of chipboard but a little bit off scale. I don't exactly remember the concept behind the build, if it was a wizard's or a guard's tower. If the former, then it's quite a small one. I left the roof open so I could place some minis there, but the walls are clearly too tall for the regular 28mm mini scale. I really wanted for the interior to be playable, so cut the structure in half after gluing it. Even added a small wood table, but also left the interior unfinished. So considering the whole build is not even finished, I wouldn't know if to really call this revisiting the project, or basically completing or reusing it. Anyways, thinking on the improvements, I wanted to add stone walls, more details like casted windows, and definitely redoing the base. Last year I jumped into the mold making adventure, which you can check on my mold making series playlist. Links above. I used different methods and definitely came to the conclusion that using rubber is the most efficient and detailed one. So I created several molds in order to avoid stone texture and jingles carving, which both take a huge amount of crafting time. I made this stone wall mold and I'm going to make several casts with my trustworthy mix of Paris plaster, water and PVA. You can also add some paint to the mix to get a base color from the go. Before pouring the mix, I spread some regular sand in the mold so the cast will have even further texture. Then tap it a bit to remove bubbles. While that cast dried, I started preparing the main structure which we'll reuse, by ripping off the base. Oh, so many memories coming back. Alright, then started removing those balsa bricks and the door's frame to get a flat surface. I decided this tower would fit better in a city scene rather than a hill or similar so was not going to add volume to the base and instead used a piece of MDF. Cut a 12 by 12 cm square. Then mark the grid as reference. I'm most likely not going to use the tower's interior, so glued both pieces together. I started by unmolding the dried and hardened stone wall casts. As you see, I got some bubbles, so blend those out by carving around them with the X-Acto knife. Then started measuring the size of the wall panels and cut those out. These are some casts I previously made with other molds. I'm going to use some stone windows and a doors frame, which I marked on one of the walls and then cut it out. Then started gluing the walls and door frame to the main structure. Use some rubber bands to hold the pieces while they dry. Added some PVA to strengthen the walls. I took some measures to align the windows and for the top walls, I used a mini as reference to get a proper height and mark them on paper. Then chopped off the tips from the structure. 
used the paper template to cut some chipboard templates and glued the stone walls to them to use as base. I do this because the cast is rather fragile. Cut them out once dry and then glue them to the outer side of the top walls. I then prepared some further sculpt mix and filled in any gaps and recesses. Once the plaster dried and hardened, I carved out some additional or lost details. I cut some smaller and additional stone casts to cover the inner parts of the walls and then glued them. With some of the mix, I sculpted the top of the walls. Here's the full tower once dried. I started working on the windows and first marked where the cast would go. Then carved out the walls with the X-Acto knife and glued the windows to each side. Once the structure was ready, I started with the front door. Cut a small piece of foam and marked some good lines with a carving tool. Then cut some small chipboard stripes to simulate steel holding the door together. I used a small skull epoxy casted piece for the door's knob and added a small chain link to it as the knocker. Then glued it to the door. I carved out some of the bricks from the tower's corners and then recreated them with the plaster mix. Starting with the paint, I gave the entire tower a diluted black base so it got in all recesses. Once it dried, I apply a dark grey wash to fill in all bricks recesses. After it dried, I went over the entire tower's stone with a black dry brush and then also gave it a very light grey dry brush. Went over the windows roofs with a dark red and then a brown wash. I painted the doors wood with a bright dark brown as base and then gave it a lighter brown. Then gave it a dry brush with a light tan. Painted the iron stripes with a bronze and then prepare a blue and greenish wash to simulate bronze oxide. For the roof's floor, I went with my personal popsicle technique. First, soaked a lot of popsicles in a dark brown wash and let them absorb the paint for a day or two. Put some weight on top so they stay submerged. After that, I took them out dry with some paper towels and place them in a tray to dry in the sun. Save the wash for other uses. Once dry, they are ready to use in these and other crafts. Marked and cut some individual pieces and started gluing them to the floor. I wanted to keep the trap door, so created a small one with the same front doors technique. I have some printed tiles to use in my RPG table, so cut a piece to use in the base and glue it with decoupage glue. Or Mod Podge, which is just a brand of decoupage glue. Also added further glue on the back of the base, so it didn't bend. To finish the build, 
I glued the tower to the base. Let's see how it looks in our table now. I'm really happy how this extreme makeover turned out. On one side, I got satisfaction from finally completing this forgotten build, and on another, it brought some memories from when I gave my first steps into this hub. I can see from this transformation how much I've learned since then. I hope you enjoyed the video and can also think about those old builds you made long time ago and how you can improve them. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future videos. Turn on notifications not to miss any. Take a look at further info and pictures in the Facebook and Instagram pages. Leave your comments below if there's anything you would like to share. I'll see you in the next craft.